In KwaZulu-Natal, though, there's been a number of mass shootings in recent times. Just last week, eight people were killed at Glebelands Hostel in Umlazi, and high-profile murders have also taken place in the province. And, of course, you'd remember the late AKA, A. as well, who suffered at the hands of uh, killers. The killers have not yet been caught, and reporter Dayson Tatia is following up on the police progress so far. Uh, uh, Dayson, thank you so much for your time. Of course, this just feeds into what people generally feel on a day-to-day -day basis the anxiety of safety and security in South Africa. And it's been of particular concern here in KwaZulu-Natal because as you rightfully mentioned there have been a number of mass shootings not just at places where people have been drinking or in their homes but also just out on the street and it's been very public and for that reason I think it's created a lot of anxiety for people that are in this province as a result of that and then further to that you also have the added stress of will these killers be caught are police able to track the movements of potential hitmen in the province is crime intelligence working these are all of the questions that are very important at this point as we track the number of shootings that we've seen over the past few months even just this year alone so if we talk about the road where i'm standing now i'm in tongat in in durban and on this road behind me just about two weeks ago there was a lady pumelele Ndlovu, who was killed you might remember she was driving home after work. She's a home affairs or was a home affairs employee. And she was traveling down here in a VW Polo. We've seen some really scary CCTV footage, which shows how a gunman walked up next to her along the, the center island on the road and literally pointed his gun into the car, opened fire and killed her. That person has not been caught yet. So that person's on the loose. But what's particularly interesting about that case is that she was due to testify in court in a corruption matter involving police officers. There were two police officers from Point. They were, they were dismissed as a result of an internal investigation and there was a criminal case that she was due to testify in. So although police have not specified the motive yet, that is something to consider because those that are close to her have mentioned that she had received threats prior and she was involved in this but I think that just brings home the point of the level of danger that so many people here face on the topic of this road a few months prior to that there were two separate shootings one where two people died a few meters behind me and on the same day three people were shot dead in a bucky a few hundred meters ahead of where I'm standing again we don't know of any uh, arrests in that particular matter and I think it's important to stress that this is just one particular road that I'm talking about and this is just one area and I'm only talking about a few months and I said uh, very little comfort from the Minister of Police uh, with the release of the crime statistics it seems that there is no plan in place or he himself doesn't have the necessary vision and strategy in dealing uh, with the rampant crime he even further went to say that when it comes to KZN the issue of Ingabi or Hetman is very prevalent there that doesn't give us much uh, um, you know peace uh, in, in the country it's almost like an open secret that KwaZulu-Natal is where people uh, in other parts of the country look to when it comes to hitmen. And that's been, an, uh, it's been the case for the longest time. But that's not okay because as much as this is known, it's, uh, it's, it's something that needs to be stopped. So at the same time, you know, it's, it's a bit of both. If you look at just last week, there was, there was a situation where police responded in within a few minutes and they were able to shoot dead three robbers that had robbed a man outside a bank. So as much as they, you know, we, we have to look at both sides because they are those success stories. But unfortunately, that offers cold comfort to the families that are waiting to find out about those that committed the crimes in their, uh, with their particular relatives, people that have been shot dead. They're waiting for months to find out why or who was behind it because hitmen are that easily available in this province. We've heard stories of just a few thousand rand being able to pay for hitmen to commit a crime. Obviously, the profile of the individual counts here that can go up to 500,000 or a million rand or even more. But that is something that uh, police constantly tell us that they're working on, but yet we still see the prevalence of these Izangabi in KwaZulu-Natal.
What about the community involvement and how community policing forums have been supported and resourced so that they can work in collaboration with law enforcement agencies? Well, there has been, uh, of late especially, there's been a lot of collaboration between various entities. And one of the important ones is also private security companies because they've stepped in in many areas and they've started working very closely with communities and the police, almost uh, like a buffer, if you will. So they work with all of these different structures. You have the CPFs as well that are working closely. You have in this area, for example, you've got an organization called uh, CERT. They also, it's a community-based organization organization they respond and deal with certain incidents but by and large it comes down to the police it comes down uh, to the NPA these are the the entities that people look to but right now it seems that one of the challenges that police are having is the issue of trust they constantly tell us this when we when we speak to them about these crimes they always say to us but it's the communities that are not giving them information and if you had to go deeper you have to question why that is. Is it a lack of trust? I just started this interview by talking about an issue of corruption within the police. So it is a two-way street. Yes, on the one hand, communities have that information that can, can, that can assist investigations, but at the same time, they may not necessarily trust police officers themselves. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Desan, for your time. That's senior reporter Desan Tatia uh, reflecting on uh, the uh, e uh, killings or rampant killings in KwaZulu Natal, saying that there's also a trust deficit on the side of the community where the law enforcement tries to uh, gain as much information regarding crime in that area.